Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Dell Latitude 7320. This is a rather pricey detachable from Dell that has a surface inspired design. It actually performs pretty well and we're going to be taking a deeper dive into what this device is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Dell. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this device is all about. Now, as I mentioned at the outset, this is a pricey device. The one we're looking at today should cost a little over $2,000 as configured. It starts at around $1,500. Unfortunately, the entry level model only has four gigabytes of RAM and the RAM is not upgradable. So I would avoid that one and look at some of the others that have an eight or 16 gigabyte configuration. Now this one has an i7 processor on board. This is an 1180G7. This has the Iris XE graphics and this actually does a pretty good job with games as you'll see in a few minutes along with other graphically intensive tasks. And our review model here is running with 16 gigabytes of RAM and what appears to be dual channel configuration based on some of the performance benchmarks we ran on it. It's got 256 gigabytes of internal storage on an NVMe. The storage is upgradable along with the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card and the battery can be swapped out and it's all screwed together so you don't have to uh, use any uh, hot air to loosen up glue. It looks like it's fairly accessible. There are screws here along the bottom that allow you to get into the case if you do need to swap that hardware out. It's not something they recommend for users to do, but they are trying to be a little friendly to the IT staff if you do need to swap out a hard drive, for example. This has a 13 inch display. It's running at 1920 by 1280, so essentially a 1080p display. But when you're at 13 inches, it looks nice and sharp at that resolution. It does have a little bit of backlight bleed here on the side that I can see, but otherwise it looks really nice. It's got a decent contrast ratio. It is of course a touch display because this is a detachable tablet device. And I was very pleased overall with its quality. I also like that it's a three by two display. So you do get a little more height on this versus a standard 16 by nine 1080p display. Uh, the only thing you'll have to look out for is that if you're watching movies full screen, you will have a little bit of uh, black bars top and bottom to fit that aspect ratio, but it's not a deal breaker for me. When I'm working on documents, I just like to have that screen height to it. Now, as I mentioned, this is a detachable, so you can run it as a tablet. Right now, I don't have it in tablet mode, but of course you can set that to go automatically. Uh, this will support Windows 11 when it's released, so that tablet mode might be a little nicer than what they currently have on Windows 10. Uh, you can, of course, use it in either orientation, and then you can redock it to the keyboard when you want to get things going again. Uh, you will notice here that there is a pen that they included with our demo model here, and we'll get to that pen in a few minutes. It docks itself uh, kind of like the Surface Pro X does, and when you move the keyboard up to get it into that uh, angled configuration here, the pen will stow itself in that spot, and that's also where the pen charges. So that's a nice way to get that pen aligned here, and it will uh, connect itself magnetically and kind of get itself into place there, which is pretty nice. Now the tablet portion here comes in just under a kilogram at 789 grams. That is one pound, seven ounces. When you add the keyboard dock to the mix here, you get an extra pound added to the weight. Uh, so the total package with the keyboard attached is two pounds, eight ounces, or 1.13 kilograms. It's actually pretty lightweight, all things considered, for a Tiger Lake laptop with decent performance. I found the kickstand here on the back to be fairly good at getting into a comfortable position. It also stayed pretty stable on my lap when I was trying that out earlier. Uh, it is a clangy metal design here. The whole back casing here is metal. It feels really nicely constructed overall. Now it has a 1080p webcam that actually looks pretty good in low light as you can see here, but it's hard to get an angle that works based on how this kickstand is put together. So right now, I, I've got it in a fairly comfortable typing position, kind of the position I would use this machine in, but I'm not centered on the screen because of the height of the webcam. So to get myself centered better, I've got to move the display up to a higher angle 
but the kickstand won't engage at that angle, so I really can't get a shot that keeps me centered here based on the position of the camera. So I don't know how they might be able to address that in future hardware revisions, but right now if you are doing web conferences and sitting kind of where I'm sitting right here, you're gonna have to lean over a little bit to get yourself centered. But the camera itself is pretty high quality. You also have Windows Hello support here, so you can use facial recognition for logging into the machine. There's also a fingerprint reader here on the back that you can use if you prefer that. Additionally, uh, it will put itself to sleep when you walk away, and then when you walk back in front of it, it will wake up again. And if your face is in front of it, it will run the facial detection and let you in without having to touch anything, which I thought was pretty nice. Now, our review loaner here has a rear camera, but I was not able to access that camera with any of the software that I tried. That includes the built-in Windows camera app, along with Zoom and Skype. So unfortunately, I can't give you much insight on that camera. But let's take a look at the ports that you've got on this one. On this side, you have a Thunderbolt 4 port. This is a full service port, so this will allow video output, data devices in and out, and power delivery. So this is where you can plug it in to charge it or plug in some other device. Uh, this looks like a card slot, but it's actually a speaker. And the speakers on this actually sound pretty good, but they're not that loud. So if you need something louder, you'll probably want to attach some headphones to it or use some Bluetooth headphones. But the sound quality is good. You've got decent stereo separation and a good range of sound. Uh, this here is one of the vents for its cooling system. And I have to say, this is one of the quietest laptops or tablets I have used in a while with a fan. You really can't hear it at all, uh, but it does actively push the hot air out of these vents and I guess it does it out of two different directions and you'll see in a few minutes the performance of its cooling system is much better than I expected. Uh, here you have a headphone microphone jack, you've got a volume rocker here, you've got that other speaker there and you get a second Thunderbolt 4 port over on this side, also a full service port and Thunderbolt also will let you hook up external GPUs and that sort of thing. So you do have some flexibility here uh, with two of those Thunderbolt ports on board. And then right here, you've got a security slot so you can lock it down on a desk. Uh, your power switch is here in the front, uh, but of course you can also just walk up to the laptop if you have that proximity sensor activated to get into it without having to push that button at all. Now the detachable keyboard doesn't quite have the stability that you would like to see out of a laptop, for example. So when you have it in that propped up uh, position here, you can see it moves around quite a bit. The keyboard is backlit and you will get some better stability if you lay it flat on the desk, but that might not be as comfortable uh, given how flat it is. Uh, the keys though aren't bad on this. It does have fairly decent travel for a thin keyboard. Uh, the trackpad isn't bad either. You can actually click it even up this high, so it's got a good range to its functionality, and overall it feels nice. But again, I would like to have something a little more rigid and a little less bendy, if that's a word, uh, when it's in that uh, propped up position. Now, if you keep the brightness down on the display and kind of stick to basic apps like word processing and web browsing, you should be able to get eight to nine hours out of the battery on this device less of course if you put it under heavy load. And this is an area where we're seeing some better battery performance out of the new ARM-based devices like the Surface Pro X that will go much longer uh, than this will. But this delivers much better performance and that's what we're gonna take a look at now, starting with some basic web browsing and then we'll work our way up from there. All right, so let's load up Google Chrome here and go to the nasa.gov homepage and see how everything comes up. Uh, this has Wi-Fi 6 built in, and that's what we're connected to right now here in the studio. And as you can see, as expected, everything renders up very quickly. We've got a nice responsive touch display here as well. And I don't think you're going to have any problems browsing the web on this device given the processor that it has on board. Altogether, it's a great experience, and it's really nice to read on a nice big screen like this, especially because you have the aspect ratio that really works well for web browsing in either configuration here. And it also does very well at media consumption. I'm running a 1080p 60 frames per second video here from my YouTube channel. This is the one we like to test whenever we've got one of these laptops in. I'm not seeing any drop frames here. I did have a couple when I switched to full screen mode, but that's kind of a usual behavior here in the Chrome browser. All in, it seems to be working nice. The color is excellent on the display. 
And you will see, of course, when you are running a video like this one with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, that you will get a little bit of a black bar on the top and bottom, just because this is running at a slightly different aspect ratio than this display is. But altogether, very nice performance here for media browsing. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 186. That's a great score for any laptop. And this one, of course, is a tablet. Uh, so overall, for web browsing and basic work functions, this is going to perform quite well. Let's take a look now at the pen. Now, the pen here is your standard construction pencil design. I kind of like this design because I'm not hitting these buttons here by accident, which happens a lot to me, at least, uh, with those rounded pens. It feels pretty comfortable. Uh, the pen registers probably about a quarter of an inch, maybe up to about a half inch away from the screen, so it's got a good detection range to it. Again, this is an active pen, so it does need to be charged in the keyboard here when it's not in use. They do say, though, that it charges up very quickly, so if it does happen to be dead, it shouldn't take you long to get it going. Uh, it feels pretty good. I'm not feeling a lot of jitter to it. It does have some pressure sensitivity, too, so if your app supports that, you can uh, have it uh, do different styles of lines based on the amount of pressure you're putting in there. But overall, it feels pretty nice. I like the way the pen feels on the screen. It's got a little bit of resistance to it, so it feels a little more natural to me, so that's pretty good. And overall, it doesn't seem to have a lot of latency here either. So altogether, a nice pen solution here on the Dell. So let's move on now to some games. And this is Red Dead Redemption 2 running at 1280 by 720 at the absolute lowest settings. We were getting frame rates that were usually between 25 and 30 frames per second. It felt very playable, though, as we were running around here testing things out. And that's awesome for a tablet device like this, I think. And that's why you might want to look at an Intel-based tablet versus an ARM one at the moment, at least on the Windows side. Uh, but this is an example of just how far the Intel graphics have come over the last couple of years. Now, remember, we're running this on an i7 version of this tablet. The other processors don't have as much graphical horsepower as the top of the line i7s do. So just keep that in mind here. But if you are looking to play some games casually on the road, this will probably do it. Uh, we also ran Fortnite at a higher resolution. This one was running at the native display resolution of 1920 by 1280, but we kept the settings at their lowest here. And the frame rate was a little bit all over the place. You saw a, a little lag hit there. And then you can see that we were getting up to like 70 frames per second, and then it dropped down to the 40s. So it's going to bump around quite a bit. We see that often with this game on these Intel chips. So this is one you might want to run at a lower resolution, but you can definitely get a very playable Fortnite experience out of this device as well. And then we always like to look at GTA 5 because even though it's an older game, it still stresses out computers pretty decently. And this is running also at the native display resolution of 1920 by 1280 at the lowest settings. And we were generally above 30 frames per second at those settings as we were playing the game here. So it's really nice to see uh, just some very good gameplay performance out of something with an Intel processor on board without any fancy graphic chips or other things there. So this is where we're at now with some of these Intel graphics. And to turn something like this into a little mini game machine, I think is pretty cool. Let's take a look at some benchmarks now. So we'll start with the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test. And here we got a score of 1,250. That does put this laptop behind where we've seen other i7 chips fall in from this generation, but it's in a much smaller package. So I'll give them a little bit of a pass on that. And as you saw, the games actually ran fairly well here on our real-world tests. We also ran the 3D Mark Stress Test, which measures how well it does under constant sustained load. And there we got a score of 96.7%. That is really close to a passing score. Passing is 97%. So it shouldn't have too much thermal throttling if you do place it under heavy load if you're doing photo editing or video editing or something along those lines. Uh, one thing that I did notice, and Jake noticed this too when he was working on the machine, is that it does get quite warm here on the back of the unit. I think that might be by design, so don't be concerned with that. We didn't see any issues with that when we were testing it. Again, you've got all of these vents here on the sides of the unit, so you'll want to keep all of those clear. 
the fan is almost completely silent. We rarely heard any noise coming out of this thing as it was cooling itself off. And that's not something you can say about other similar laptops that sometimes aren't much larger than this one. So it's doing a good job keeping itself cool. But again, you will feel some heat, especially here on the top portion of the tablet. All right, one last thing to take a look at, and that is its Linux compatibility. We booted up Ubuntu 21.04. It was able to detect most of the hardware successfully, including the video, the touch panel, the keyboard, and the trackpad. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth worked just fine, but the audio did not work on this one. I also noticed that occasionally the video was kind of slow to render, but it was able to play back video just fine. So it felt a little glitchier to me on Linux than I've seen on other Tiger Lake devices. And of course, you'll have to track down some Realtek audio drivers to get the sound working out of the speakers or maybe attach something up uh, to one of the Thunderbolt ports for that. But overall, from a Windows perspective, this is a nice tablet. It does cost a lot, but I'm very pleased with the performance, especially given how you don't hear the fan running even when you're placing the computer under a heavy load. That was really nice to see. Again, it does warm up a bit, uh, but it's not, to me at least, alarming, but it's something that you'll definitely feel again up here. But the quality on this feels nice. I would have liked for a little bit more of a stable typing surface out of the keyboard at this price point but I think it's a nice surface alternative and definitely will deliver the kinds of performance you will not get out of an ARM-based Windows machine, at least at this point in time. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.